Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It is so good to be here with you, isn't it? I was just listening to the song um, Feel Love by Alicia Keys, and I think it is such a heartwarming, beautiful song, especially on a, a cold day like this. So, and here we are, Tuesday, November 10th, and we are feeling the cold of the winter coming, especially in Los Angeles. It's like we went from hot to cold in a split of a day. So welcome. Thank you for being here, for being present. Before we go any further, I just want to, hello, Claudia, hola. How are you? It's so good to have you here. Um, I just right off the bat wanna say that in the next uh, nine days, you're gonna hear and see a lot of posts because on November 19, we are having our The Great American Smokeout where I'm going to do a 90 minute uh, stop smoking uh, session right here live on Facebook, but you have to sign up for that. You have to register and you can register um, just text stop it now to 818-221-2797. And I will have the information down there again. So on this day, on this afternoon, it's going to be in the evening uh, for 90 minutes. Maybe we'll even bring more value and go higher. It's all about the mindset reset, how the mind works, how habits are formed, and how is the cycle of when we get into a point of from, uh, from doing something to creating a habit, from creating a habit to being a part of the behavior. And, you know, there is a whole saying, I'm going to talk about it. So all that, and I'm going to finish it with a session of hypnosis guiding everyone into becoming a non-smoker. Uh, yes, the Great American Smoke Out in November is all about mental health. It's about health and wellness. It's about us appreciating who we are, taking care of yourself. So November 19, the Great American Smoke Out, I'm doing a 90-minute text stop it now to 818-221-2797. Uh, had to wear flannel PJs last night. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I think that is amazing. Hi, Scott. Oh, Mark, how are you? Uh, Sada John, it's so good to have you. I love having all of you being present. You know, I was reading Yes, I do have my own Stomp on Smoking uh, book that I did for all my clients who wanted to stop smoking. So for those who want to come here and we do a full hypnotherapy session, not only we do the sessions, plus uh, I, do a, I give them an audio recording that you are supposed to listen every night for 33 days, and I will say why 33 days, consecutive 33 days, plus this book, this booklet of mine that it says Stomp on Smoking, and it's in-depth lessons and guided visualization, because anything, any habit that we have created, it didn't start. So in this booklet, there is all kinds of uh, going back, thinking about it, writing, uh, and like I have a story of one of my clients, Jonathan, that uh, when, Jonathan, uh, when Jonathan's father developed throat cancer after never being a smoker, and Jonathan, who had smoked since he was 15, decided to stop at the age of 30 through, 32. And he said, I felt guilty that I smoked and was considered healthy, not realizing I was doing so poorly. I did cut back to one or two smokes a day. Unfortunately, the pressures of daily stress, life, and everything that was happening at the brink of divorce and dealing with doctors and child custody and everything else, it 
drove him to smoke more. You see, I truly believe habits are formed for us so that we have something to do uh, in order for us to be busy with our uh, ourselves with. So it's an emotional connection, smoking, drinking, overeating. And I'm saying over because there is a moderation in everything. One is healthy and then what becomes unhealthy for those who drink and what is that tilting point of being an unhealthy drinker that you consider yourself uh, or someone that you are an alcoholic. Is it a mindset? Is it the amount of the alcohol? Is it amount of cigarettes? So it's why we drink, why we smoke, why we eat certain things. And the thought process, the mindset, and the emotional connection, I think, the beginning is what I work with. So we tap into the subconscious level. And for those of you who do not know me, um, my name is Lisa Bouvari. And by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, anger management, and a uh, domestic violence uh, consultant. So there is so much. We are just walking, talking, emotional folks. We're human, we feel, we think, we do. But before we even take any action, we think it, we see it. We, like when we want to eat something, we first think it, imagine it, salivate. And then we say, okay, this is what I want. Like if you're in an office or anywhere, they say, or when you wanna go somewhere, sitting in the car, they say, okay, where do you wanna go? And everyone starts thinking, what do I feel like eating? What do I feel like then it's the eating? So it's first thinking about it, then feeling it, then doing it. So when someone says, let's say CPK, CPK, and if you don't know the menu, they say, let me send you the menu. You look at the menu and then something in your subconscious says, I like that. I don't like that. I like that. I don't like that. The color is no. Today, I don't feel like meat because I had meat. So everything is a thought process before it is consumed. Buying a car is the same thing. What do I feel like? What do I want? And I truly believe when we smoke, the smokers, it's an emotional connection. It's the oral gratification. So first thing I do with all my clients is understand when you smoke, how many you smoke, why do you smoke? Is it just unconscious because it's there, you pick it up? Or is it because you feel the urge and urges can be eliminated and fade away and disappear for certain things. Right now, think about something that you truly enjoy, eating or drinking. Go ahead. Did you think first? Did your body react, salivate on that thing? And then you said, mm. and because you have this emotional connection to whatever it is that it's your favorite, either drinking or smoking or eating, that's the reaction. So when we do hypnosis, we take you from the conscious thinking, analyzing, judging, aspect to a state of relaxation so that we can tap into the subconscious and edit the files that creates that craving and stop the craving, right? Just like one of my clients who, uh, bless her soul right now, but 
I've mentioned her many, many times that she used to smoke two packs a day. And in one session, because of the fear of dying, because she had to go, she had throat cancer. And they said, we need to do chemotherapy and you cannot be smoking while we do the chemo. She stopped in one session. Now, here's one thing I wrote in my book. It says, it's time to stomp on smoking. Why stomp? Even the picture is about stomping. Because when you stop something, when you stomp on the cigarettes, when you decide and choose to stop instead of quit versus being a quitter, which as an adult, we never want to be a quitter in anything, not in love, not in success, not even in cutting a habit. Do you get what I'm saying? All right. So that is what I'm talking about. And a major cool person. Well, thank you, Sherry. Hello, Henry. I know you're a smoker. If you ever decide to become a non-smoker, just let me know. So here I have a quote that I put, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live in. You see, this is it. This is all we've got. You can do the nip tuck. You can do the Botox. You can do the running. You can do everything. Yesterday, I was doing a panel with health uh, practitioners and everything. Amazing women achievers in the healthcare industry from CEO, from head of uh, ER, and uh, just amazing head a CEO of a cancer center. And every one of them said the same thing, take care of yourself and your health and wellness, because we all go through something, a scare, a health scare, one with cancer, one with alcoholism, the other one with obesity, the other person with diabetes, you know, we all go through it. Um, I'm in a group, it's one of my groups called Me Time with Lisa. It's a special closed group of women and I post things, we talk about things that is very much with, uh, connected to women's wellness in mind and body, emotions and everything. A few days ago, I posted that my blood pressure was eight, um, 85 over 48, pulse uh, being at 63. Like it's lower than what is norm, but I am in tip top shape and I can lower my blood pressure or raise my blood pressure. And I also help my clients and I can help you regulate your blood pressure, which is truly connected to a lot of stress. So much of our wellness is connected to stress factor. I know today is a little bit of a show and tell. I'm a co-author in a book called The One Habit of Entrepreneurs for Entrepreneurs Success. In here, um, I am on right smack in the middle on uh, page 419, right? Yay, see? And if you are interested in book, I have six of them. And by all means, this is one of the thickest, thickest entrepreneurial books I have ever seen. And in the beginning, I'd like to share this because it says, after you have read how to make a habit your own, flip through the pages and let the habit find you because we have over 300 habits in here. And it, it, it's really the cycle of habit. I call it the 33 days of how to break a habit because we do something over and over, over and over until we like what we do. And then we incorporate that into our daily ritual. And when we do something daily and it makes us feel good and it can be good habit or bad habit, exercise is the good habit, 
Smoking is the negative habit, even though you feel good because you think you are relaxing, you think you have a buddy system because of the smoking, and yet from your lips, you put that toxin and tobacco and all the embalming solution right around your lips. And then with your saliva that touches the end tip of the cigarette, you go, right? You just inhale what's in the filter, in the tar, the same thing as vaping. The moment the saliva, you swallow the saliva, you're taking all that solution. You think vaping is just clear. Oh God, no. All that solution, all that nicotine, all that toxicity straight in. And when we, it's just like setting fire. You connect saliva, which is wet, wet fire and air and all that. And you smoke it all the way down here, burning all the small little membranes inside your mouth your tongue in here all the way down and smile as it goes down into your lungs this is not this is not the session for stop smoking but i'm just saying it's the mindset that we think by doing this i feel good hmm mind you i used to be a smoker from the time that i was 12 years old my cousin rewarded me with a cigarette when I would steal cigarettes for him and he would unpack it, put one in his mouth, give me one as a reward. So I thought smoking became a reward thing for me. So it was a feel good until I became a hypnotherapist. And because I truly, one of my core values is ethics. I could not imagine in my mind being ethical of smoking, going outside, having a cigarette, coming in here and helping my clients become a non-smoker while I reeked of the smell of cigarettes, even the smell. And here's how sensitive I became years before I stopped. I used to go dancing four nights a week at the country uh, bar. And I was there for three to four hours. I would dance, play, shoot pool, uh, have a beer and smokes. A pack of cigarettes was always with me, right? And I was tip top shape, all muscle because I was dancing for three hours with all that. And then I would, when I came to shoot pool, I would start the smoking part. Now, smoking, drinking, dancing, healthy, unhealthy, and yet all of them felt good. The moment I would walk into my house, I would take all my clothes, put it in the washer, close the lid because I could not stand the smell of cigarettes. Hmm. Right? Until the time that I couldn't stand the cigarettes, well, never in the car never in the house again, never in, okay, never in the car, never in the bedroom, never in the bathroom, never in the house, and it was going outside. So it became this discomfort. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Why do I have to pain myself to feel good? And it just didn't make sense. So it was two years into doing the work that I am doing in helping clients shift patterns and become healthier that I stopped smoking. And that's over 18 years ago. Habits. And here is beautiful. It says from the communication research of Professor Emeritus of psychology, Albert Mehrabian says 55% of communication is nonverbal which is our body language. 38% is tonality, the way we use our tone. 
and seven percent is the words that we use can you believe it only seven percent of the words that we use really makes an impact everything else is how we come across i'm saying this because if you not only you get to read about my habit but there is over 300 co-authors in here that from forbes riley les brown i mean just amazing people who have co-authored in here talk about their habits of success and what are what is a habit today ava says my cousin gave me a cigarette too i'm going to share this on my healthy lifestyle tips page thank you ava i love it ava i love calling her Ava. i don't know why my apologies it's ava hi hi Elvira. so in life when you repeat those habits over and over when it becomes a part of your behavior you forget why you're doing it until it no longer feels good it's like being in a relationship that there is no intimacy that there is no joy it's just like two roommates love has faded away because each person is doing their own thing and when they come together, it's bickering or fights and everything, especially during COVID time. It's been tough on some of the clients that I help with, especially women in the situation that had to be at home with their children and homeschooling. It's tough when you reward yourself with something negative to numb your feelings or shut down what you're feeling i was being interviewed and i did a guided visualization and it was a guided visualization to just to explain how we can be hypnotized without being hypnotized because hypnosis is an internal process it's truly a guided visualization as a therapist we guide you from one state state of feeling to another state and changing transforming your emotional aspect your state of what you feel from one to another and once you shift the state even the taste of something that it's no longer good or the feeling and you realize consciously once you evoke it and you come to embrace this is why i'm doing it this is why i have been doing it and i no longer choose to do this it's the decision it's a, the commitment it is your communication with yourself consciously and subconsciously when they come to an agreement you come to understand the shift happens like this because pain means i feel powerless i am not in my own power i i feel anxious i feel insecure there is so much negativity that's what pain is and it could be emotional mental or physical and help you go from this just as switch to gain to understand how you can grow and feel good about yourself have that self pride and know that I can make a change. And the change does not mean that right away you leave your partner, but how you start thinking and feeling about who you are, your wants, your needs, your health, your environment, your children, what is best. 
and become taking steps for that. The guided visualization that I did, I'm going back to that because I do not forget where I start, is that I did a visualization of saying, imagine in your own mind, having the keys to the door to your home. And I want you to do the same thing right now. Just take a nice deep breath. And let everything else fade away. Just imagine and become what with the sound of my voice. And no matter what else you hear in the background, no matter where you are, the first thing I want you to say to yourself is, I am safe right now, right here. And then in your own mind's eye, you pick that key, you unlock the door, knowing exactly that this is the door to your house, to your home, apartment, condo, wherever it is. And you walk inside. Turn around in your own mind's eye and close the door ever so gently. And as you stand right there, take that key and put it somewhere close. Maybe even in your pocket or drop it in your purse. I don't know. Or you can just hold it in your hand. Realize that it's probably not one key, but you have many, many keys. And yet, you know, from day one, from the time that the key was made, this is the one key that opens this door. And the rest of them will not fit in here. Standing there, become aware of the flooring you are standing And in your own mind's eye, take your shoes off. And you can even wiggle your toes and become aware of the temperature of the flooring. And I don't know if it is marble, if it is concrete, if it is hardwood, or maybe even carpeting. And it feels good. And as you are standing there, just slightly for a moment, become aware of all the sounds in your home. Even if the place is empty, there have been many sounds, maybe music, TV, construction in the background, traffic on the other far side, kids, familiar sounds. And if it is heartwarming, you smile. And when it's not, you just become aware. And at that very moment, you validate who you are and realize that you are standing up and that you have the power within you to stand up to a lot of things, physically, mentally, emotionally, that you are strong, you have a sound mind, you have a strong body, because you are still standing. And every single day in your life, you have been stepping forward for a cause or for something that you have been working forward towards that you believe in. And today, as you are standing right there next to that door with the keys in your hand, knowing that you have the key to open not only this door, but many, many doors 
within yourself and outside yourself, even opportunities that you are the bearer of this key and the decision that you will have the ability to make the choices and you have a loving heart and in case you have forgotten there is a sliver of a chance that you remember how good you are and I want you to bank all the love and care and genuine connection you had with your loved ones because no matter where even when you think you are not connected you're not cared for there has always been someone who loves you or loved you cared for you still does And I want you to become kinder to that younger version of you within you that has been waiting for you to look within and say, I see you. I matter. You matter. I choose health. I choose wellness. I choose me. You see the M, if you flip it upside down, it becomes a W. So the me becomes a we. It's not about being selfish. It's about self-awareness self-regard, self-care, so that you can in turn care for those who you love. And that means stand up for who you are. And become more aware of what you want in life. Because if you don't want health and wellness, you can become a non-smoker. So let us stomp on the things by choice. Choose to stomp it, stop it, release it, shed it, and letting it go so that you can bring the best parts of what you want to create and enhance even relationships are supposed to be there to enhance one another. They say people do not leave a company. They resign and leave a manager. So the company is your home, is your environment. When you resign, or you resign from a place or a habit that no longer benefits you. So, healthy boundaries. Amen. Healthy boundaries. Thank you, Henry. Uh, we all create boundaries, and we must all have boundaries. Like when we go shopping or something and when someone we don't know stands so close and they back up, you go, whoa, right? That is my boundary. So nowadays, everything is six feet apart. I, I, I think that is something that we are going to, it's going to be embedded in us. And if this continues for a few more months, it's going to become a habit. And that habit may become a part of our behavior. We walk outside, we think, oh my God, now I have to put a mask on or I have to stand, please stand so far away. In a way, it's disconnecting us in many ways which is in a way fortunate because of what's happening 
and yet unfortunate because of we're becoming so disconnected with so much things. In closing, oh my God, I've gone over. Oh, bad roommate that wants a slave. You know what? Bad roommate, bad roommate that wants a slave. What does that mean? That means you have recognized that the roommate is bad and yet who wants a slave. And if that person has been there and accepts the terms, then it has been accepted. But when we recognize that the roommate is bad and wants someone that constantly does things for them and you no longer want to do it, you have choices. You stop doing it. You don't have to leave. If you want, you can ask them to leave, but if financially it's not correct or the bond is something that it's not feasible at this moment, you say, I'm done. I'm not going to do it. And what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen when you say no? Because no is as good of an answer as is yes. It comes to your choice and what you want for you. And in closing, I would like to say, habit encompasses all of the habits, big or small, because we pick it up and we continue. Sometimes we even take on somebody else's habit because we care for them and we start mirroring them or copying them. And for that, be aware, be mindful, be more loving and be kind. And if that habit can help you succeed and become better, by all means, take it on. Take it on and go as far as you can and realize the only limit that we see, boundaries, are the limits that we place upon ourselves. We have the right to love, to be loved, to be successful, and to know. We are looked upon. For that, I thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you for always being here and being a supportive. Amen. Thank you. Um, is there any question? Uh, again, check out uh, my Stomp on Smoking uh, session that I will be doing October, November 19th on the Great American Smokeout. Please text stop it now or you can even go to my website which is healwithin.com and it's also right there. You can um, you can click and sign up and register there. And if you know anyone who is even has this inclination of wanting to stop smoking, by all means, have them come and join us. And Jasmine says, yay, I love you, Jesse. I love you, my cousin. I love who you are, your strengths, and all the things you have endured to be where you are. God bless you. And God bless you all. May the universal light surround you. Until next week. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. And if you want to go back and watch other videos,